In this lecture, we will discuss one of the most important vector operation, which is adding elements to a vector. So in the previous lecture, we have seen how we can initialize and define vectors. And we have also seen the ways in which vectors function. Now we will see how we can add elements to a vector. And also we will see how adding elements to a vector impacts a vector. Now talking about adding elements to a vector, we have already seen some of the ways in which we were adding elements to vector in the previous lecture, like directly initializing the elements of a vector. So we saw that while defining the vector itself, we were directly initializing the elements of a vector. But this is a good approach only if we have a small number of known initial values. If we have just a small number of initial values that we want to initialize during the definition of the vector itself, then this is a good approach. And also, if we want to make a copy of another vector. So we saw that one way of initializing a vector is by making a copy of that vector using a vector that already exists. So in that case also, direct initialization is a good approach. And if we want to initialize all the elements to the same value, this also we have seen in the previous lecture where we were initializing all the elements to the same value by providing just the count followed by the initial value. So if we want to, let's say, have 10 elements with the same value, we just have to specify the count, which is 10, followed by the initial value, which would be there for all those 10 elements. So in these kind of cases, direct initialization is a good approach. But mostly when we create a vector, we don't know how many elements we'll need. And also, we don't know the value of those elements. So the main reason why we use vectors is because of its dynamic nature and because of the flexibility that it offers. It is not mandatory for us to know how many elements we will need in a vector or what the values of those elements will be. So unlike other data types where we have to be specific about these things, in case of vectors, we don't have to be specific about these things. And that is why vectors are really useful and very flexible. So let's take an example here. If we need a vector with values from 0 to 9, then we can use list initialization like we were doing in the previous lecture. This is very easy. But what if we need a vector with values from 0 to 999? Then if we try to use list initialization here, this would be a disaster because you would have to manually enter all the values from 0 to 999 and that is not a very feasible task. So as a solution to all of this, we have something known as the pushback operation. So it is always better to create an empty vector and use a vector member named pushback to add elements at runtime. So when we were discussing about vectors earlier, I already mentioned that it is possible to create empty vectors and we have already seen those examples as well. So at that time, it might seem a little strange of why we would be creating empty vectors. But now we can understand why it is important to create empty vectors. Empty vectors allow us to just create the vectors and later it allows us to add the elements to that vector as and when required. So in order to do that, we have a vector member named pushback and this is used for adding elements at runtime. So pushback takes the value and it pushes that value as a new last element onto the back of the vector. So by using this pushback, we can keep adding elements as the new last element to the back of the vector and hence the vector can keep growing as we require. Let us take some examples to understand how this is done. So here I have a piece of code and here as you can see, I am declaring a vector called myVec which is of the type integer and here I am running a for loop with the index i. It runs from 0 until 100 and then here we are incrementing i. And here we can see we are making use of our pushback here. So I say myvec.pushback of i. Now, what does this mean? Let us take a closer look at the syntax. So here, this is the syntax, the name of the vector, which is this one, myvec, followed by the dot. And then we have this pushback, which has to be written push underscore back. And then within parenthesis, we specify the value that has to be pushed into this vector. So here basically what we are doing is we are running this loop and all the values that we get from this loop iterations that is the values of i that we are pushing into this vector myvec. So each of the values would be stored onto the back of the vector one by one. And here I am running another for loop. It's a range for statement actually. 
that runs over the vector called myvec with an index i which is an integer and i am trying to print this i and that would give me all the values that is stored in this vector called myvec okay so let us run this code in visual studio code and see if it is working as expected so here in visual studio code i have the complete program that is written for that code snippet that we just saw and here let me run the program so the name of the program is vector underscore push one dot cpp it is compiled successfully so let us run it all right so as you can see here using this loop we stored the values from 0 till 100 into this vector called myvec and this statement here it just printed out all the values of that vector so we can see the values printed from 0 until 100 so we see that it is working as expected okay now here we'll take one more example using a string vector so as you can see here i am defining a normal string which i name word so remember this is not a vector but this is just a normal variable of the type string and it is called word and here i am declaring a vector of the type string and i call it my text and here using a while loop we are trying to read the input from the user which would be stored in this string called word and here using our pushback operation i am trying to push that word which was entered by the user into this vector called my text so it is going to append the word to my text so as long as there is input from the user it would keep reading it and it would keep pushing it onto the vector called my text and here i am again running a range for statement using an index i which is of the type string and it is going to run over the vector my text and it is going to just print out all the values that is there in my text so let us again go to visual studio code and run this program to see if it is working as expected so here again on visual studio code i have the complete program written for that code snippet so let me run this program which is called vector push 2.cpp the program has compiled successfully let us run it all right now the program is running and it is waiting for the input from the user here so let me enter some words over here okay i have entered some words here so let me break from here and press enter and as you can see these words that i entered were stored into the vector called my text using the push back operation and then when i ran the range for statement over the vector my text all of the strings that were stored in this my text are printed each on new line so i entered hello there how are you doing and hello there how are you doing is printed on new lines so we see that it is working as expected and we have successfully pushed each of these string values onto this vector all right so that was about the most important vector operation which is adding elements to a vector. There are even other vector operations which we will discuss in the next lecture. But since adding elements to a vector is one of the most important vector operations, so we discussed it separately so that it would be clear and thorough for you. So I hope this lecture was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.